Oh, what a lousy night. You can have a kip in tomorrow morning. It is tomorrow morning. Anyway, when my youngest is awake, everyone else has to be. I've often considered booking him under the noise of bait Act. BD to Kilo One. Kilo One to BD. Over. Report your position, Kilo One. We're still waiting on the Oakhanger Road in the lay-by for the Hearts Cross roundabout. Has anything happened yet? Over. Thank you, Kilo One. A message from Mr. Scott. Mm. Operation suspended. Oh. Return to normal duties. Aren't you going to tell us what happened? Return to normal duties, Kilo One. And please observe correct RT procedure. Roger B.D. Please observe correct RT procedure. Bitchy. Aren't they all? Oh, come on, let's go home. Pass the board. What's up? Looking for an alert. Mm, uh, nothing. Should there be? Well, I thought there might be something about a white Rolls Royce. One just went by while you were chatting up in this world. Well, that's just some. I don't know how the traffic lads can stand these things. My back's killing me. With a yobbo and a bird in it. Mm, probably a member of the South Sea Bubble. Eh? If you were a respectable married man with an eight-year-old daughter, you'd know that the South Sea Bubble is a group of weirdos who jump around dressed in Hawaiian guitars and grass skirts. <laughs> they put on a concert tonight in Oakhanger. Oh, yeah. Some of our wonderful boys in uniform were complaining about the extra duties. It was going like a bat out of hell. About a minute ago. About that. <laughs> They'll be a mile away by now. More if they're breaking the law. Let's go home. I well, don't you think we should take a look? I should be home in bed before I have a divorce action on my hands. Now, if we were to nip along the common riding track, we could lie and wait for them at the top of Telegraph Hill. Go on, then. Do your autocross stuff. <laughs> This one's going to make it. <sighs> Maybe they stopped off for a quick snog. I'd stop off for a long one if I had the back of a Rolls to muck about in. Yeah, this doesn't sound like a tea break model. That's the lad. Okay. But don't stampede him into taking to the country. We don't want lawyers raiding the widows and orphans fund for repairs to a rolls. There's a good lad. Showing a bit of respect. used to enjoy my uniform days, the slow, nonchalant walk back to the offending driver. Do it properly and you can break their spirit by the time you reach them. <laughs> but in view of the inclement weather, we'll skip that bit. Oh, uh, good evening, sir. I think it's a shame. I'm sorry, we, we didn't really... All this hard practice you're putting in for Brooklyn's when it's been closed since the war. Well, we didn't know you were the police. It... There's nothing on your car. Oh, well, you see, uh, when villains put signs on their cars that say, I am a villain, then we'll shove up signs that say, uh, I am a policeman. Good evening, miss. It was. Nice car you've got here, sir. Perhaps you'd be good enough to tell me its number, save me having to walk round the back. I don't know. We've only had it a little while. Funny, there's, um, there's no dents in it. What's he on about? Dents, miss. The sort of things goods get in them when they fall off the backs of lorries. May I see your driving license, please? Uh, I, I don't actually have well, it. Well, we might as well tell them, Alan. I'll be in enough trouble as it is if I'm not home. Same here, miss. How old are you? Sixteen. Me dad will kill me if I'm not back... Well, we won't go back to Oakhanger. We'll use the North Fell office. Have you got the keys, Colt? Yes. Can't we go back to Oakhanger? That place brings on my chillblains. You heard what the young lady's father will do. Don't want to push up the night's crime figures, do we? How much petrol in this car, Sonny? It's nearly on empty. North fell off as it is then, Colt. We'll go and frighten the mice. Show over, lad. You're going ahead, Colt. I'm not sure of the way. Right. Huh. 
Right, miss. Helen Susan Snowden, 77 New Park Drive, Tilford. And your boyfriend is Alan Stephen Roberts, a trainee murder mechanic off 79 New Park Drive. Where is Alan? Detective Sergeant Colt is taking his statement from him in the next room. Telephone number? We're not on the phone yet. Nor are Alan's parents. It's a new estate. Oh, look, just charge us or whatever it is you do. I've got to go home. My dad will kill me. You should have thought of that before taking a car without the owner's permission. Mm. Picking a Rolls was silly, you know. We might not have noticed if you treated yourselves to something a bit more modest. It was the only one there. Oak Hanger is my hometown, miss. It's been ruined by the motor car. The streets are crammed with them. Half of them are legally parked. It's true. There was only the Rolls. You went to Oak Hanger to see the South Sea Bubble concert? Yes. There wasn't a bus for half an hour, so we went for a walk to look around. Where to? Well, I don't know. We'd never been to Oak Hanger before. Describe it. Well, we went down the main street and then turned off into a sort of shopping centre, it looked like. All made into little squares with roads going off at each corner. It was spooky. I got frightened. I've never heard of anyone being frightened of shops, except the prices, maybe. The whole place was dead. Shops usually are at night. No, not dead like that. Like what, then? They were all empty. Why go there in the first place? Alan wanted to... Alan wanted to what? Oh, you know. No. He wanted to, well, you know, mess about. In a shop doorway? Yes. But I was too scared. There was no one about, not even cars, or it didn't seem natural. You like an audience when you and Alan uh, mess about. You don't understand. That's right, miss, help me. Well, I'm trying to, aren't I? If you say so. Was it a shopping precinct, this um, centre of yours? In a way. But it wasn't like an ordinary shopping centre, you know what I mean? No. There were no lights in the window sort of thing. We kept walking, but we got lost. Well, each square looked like the last one. And then I got scared. My dad what could you see in these uh, shop windows? Well, it was too dark. Most of them looked empty. We walked for ages and couldn't find anyone to tell us the way back to the town. I thought you said you were already in the town. Well, we couldn't have been, could we? There was no traffic noise. It was like... Oh, what's the use? You don't believe me? Well, it, it was like a ghost town. Except everything was new. All we wanted to do was ask someone the way. I was getting scared Where did about you find the rolls? It was parked outside a shop. There was a light on at the back. We could see the shadow of a man sitting behind a frosty glass screen, as if he was at a desk or something. What sort of shop? Fabric and curtain materials. Mm -hmm. Alan tapped on the glass, but the man didn't move. And then Alan shouted through the letterbox, and still he didn't move, even when Alan shouted hard. And then... Well, then, just as it started to rain, I noticed something odd about the dummies. Well? Well, they had cloth wrapped around them, all pinned up to make it look as if they were wearing evening dresses. Well, I'd never seen such materials. There were patterns of dragons with flames coming out their mouths. And there was this dummy with really funny material around her. She looked like she was wrapped in fire. But it was her eyes. They were slanting like she was Chinese and they followed you. You know, like those pictures on hoardings where their eyes follow you no matter where you stand, but you never see their eyes move. The dummy's eyes were like that, staring at me all the time, and then I started screaming. Alan had to hit me. I see. You started screaming for no reason. I've just told you why. You described something you noticed before on hoardings, so why be frightened? Well, I don't know why I was scared, do I? I mean, when you're scared, you don't say to yourself, why am I scared, do you? All I know is I started screaming and the man in the shop didn't even move. Not even when Alan started his car up. It was unlocked? Yes. How did he start it? A piece of wire from the coil to the battery? <sighs> Something like that. What was the name of this shop? I don't know. <sighs> Living Fabrics or something. The Living Fabric Centre? Something like that. <sighs> Listen, Miss Snowden. Oak Hanger is an old-fashioned town with old-fashioned streets and very old-fashioned shops. There's nothing there that even remotely resembles this shopping centre you describe. But there is a shop called the Living Fabric Centre. It's an old place that's been smartened up. And it's just across the road from my office in Oak Hanger Police Headquarters. Both stories match. 
kids get themselves worked up into a trance at these concerts. Oh, hell, look at the time. My wife will be sitting at home writing letters to solicitors. Aren't you down for some leave? Yeah, uh, three days. I'll spend it patching up our marriage. The last thing I want is a court appearance over a lousy taking without owner's consent. Yeah. We'd better put the rolls in the garage and lock up. Come on, you two. We'll run you home. Aren't you going to charge us? It's your lucky day. I'm feeling generous, and the mice have eaten the charge sheets. Oh, thank you. I shouldn't celebrate just yet. The rolls owner could always prosecute on his own account. Is that turning on the right? On a corner will be fine. The road's not made up yet. Remember what I said. Not all the fuzz are as good-natured and as amiable as I am. You've been very kind. We won't do it again. Thank you very much, sir. What will you tell your parents? We'll think of something. Huh. With your imagination, I should have got you to dream up a story for my wife. Well, good night. And stay out of trouble. Good night, sir. And thank you very much indeed. Home, Colt. What are you grinning at? You're getting soft in your old age. Well, they seem decent enough, kids. From now on, they'll think nothing but good of the police force. They'll get married, have kids of their own, and bring them up as law-abiding citizens. Well, come on, to hell with the speed limit. I want to get home. Morning. Get out of my chair. Oh, sorry. Why is the place crawling with uniforms? Protest rally this afternoon over the town centre redevelopment. Oh, yeah. I've traced the index on that Rolls Royce. It belongs to a David Peter Kingham. Coombe Cops, Oak Hanger. The index letters match his initials. Personalised number plates. One of the customs of the rich. I thought we agreed to swing the whole thing out of traffic. Oh, well, they're up to their eyes over the rally. They asked if we'd deal with the problem as we found it. And you said yes. Well, they were very polite. <sighs> This David Kingham hasn't reported his card as missing. Well, ring him up and tell him to come and collect it. It's still over at North Fell. I told you to bring it here first thing. Yeah, there's a problem. London issued the number. They say it was for an MGB, not a Rolls. All right, so he's transferred the number to his Rolls. If it matches his initials, there's it's pretty There's another problem. Oh, no. How much do you think a new braking system will cost for a Rolls? A larger packet than the ones you and I see each month. Why? Do you remember thumping the rear end on a pothole or something when you drove it last night? No. Why? What's the matter? Must have been those two kids, then. When I went to collect it this morning, I noticed a pool of brake fluid on the floor of the garage, right under the rear axle. That's why I didn't drive it back from Northfell. I was hoping for a nice, quiet Sunday. Come on, let's go and take a look. Right. There, see? Pool of it. It's larger now than when I first saw it. It was perfectly okay when I drove it last night. What are you doing? That's odd. The brake pedal feels firm enough. It should be spongy with all that fluid leaking out. It uh, could be something broken in the boot. Mm. Let's have a closer look. You'd better get this boot open, Colt. It isn't brake fluid. It's blood. I thought your keys could open anything. It's always the last one that fits. Wasn't it Paul Jennings who wrote about the hostility of inanimate objects towards man? The Sunday papers will be writing about my hostility towards you if you don't get this boot open. Jennings was right. Oh. oh, this should make my divorce a dead cert. Human female, 10 out of 10. Aged 24 to 30. The weight would have been around 40 kilos, including blood which wasn't supplied. Had a child around two years ago, and this would have been another in 30 weeks. Length 150 centimeters, uh, quite small. Asian bone structure. And possibly Cantonese, but I'm not an anthropologist. A sandwich? Uh, no, thanks. A COD? Is that how you came by her? Cause of death. Sure. Well, that's good. Uh, no, thanks. 
manually induced asphyxia. <clears throat> it's spelt with a Y, uh. a foot strangulation. And a clumsy job done in her afterwards. It was this tibia that punctured the polythene bag and caused the blood to leak out. Quite definitely foul play. There was a wedding ring. I tried to get it off. It's quite easy when they're dead. Here. Damn. No mustard in this one. Uh, can you let me have a report later today? Now, who would I get to type it on a Sunday? First thing in the morning. I'm sure you won't try one of these. My wife cured her own ham. Director of Inspector Simmons' office. Yes, he's here now. Mr. Scott. No, no. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes, we expect to make an arrest in 12 hours, so there won't be any need to set up a... Uh, th thank you, sir, but there's my leave, so if... Mm. He trusts his coat. Says he's happy to leave the whole affair in my hands. Naturally, I didn't tell him the kids who nicked the rolls gave us false names and addresses. The descriptions have been circulated. You reckon they're involved? No, they took the rolls just as they said. I only wish I'd shown them more of my customary ruthlessness. They seem decent kids, too. Good evening. What's that row? Uh, the uh, town sent a protest the rally. Oh, Shut that window. These things are rare now. Powder compacts. Yeah, women don't use them as much as they used to. I bought the wife one and she's never looked at it. But then she doesn't like anything I buy. Any inscription? To my darling Lee San on our first anniversary from your loving husband, David. Well, that's funny. What? That rabble rouser outside just said something about the new town centre having squares. Well, there's film in this camera. Three exposures you. Now listen a minute. Well, I don't know what they're getting so worked up about. New town centre won't be built for at least five years, by which time most of them will have moved. Time we moved in on David Peter Kingham. Smart place. You have to have somewhere decent to keep a Rolls Royce. They're fussy about the homes they go to. <laughs> yes? Oh, good morning. I'm Detective Inspector Simmons, and this is my colleague, Detective Sergeant Colt. Oh, oh madam. Yes. Oh, CID. Is Mr. Kingham at home, please? Uh, no. When will he be in? Why do you want him? We'd like to ask him a few questions. Well, you... You'd better come in. I'm David's mother-in-law. I'm looking after the children while he's abroad. Mother-in-law? Yes. Where is he, Mrs... Uh... Oh, uh, Francis. David's in Hong Kong. I see. Can I help? When will he be back? Not for two weeks. Is there... Why hasn't I... his car been reported missing? Well, it's not. I used it this morning to take the children to school. How many cars has he got? Well, only one. An MGB. What about a white Rolls Royce? Oh, that only exists in his dreams. It's his great ambition to own one. Maybe he will one day. He's ambitious and the shop's doing well. What shop is that, Mrs. Francis? You're not very observant for policemen, are you? The Living Fabric Centre, right opposite the Oak Hanger Police Station. How many branches are there? Only one at the moment. And uh, what's he doing in Hong Kong? Supposing you tell me what all this is about. One thing at a time, Mrs. Francis. If you would tell me what your son-in-law is doing in He's Hong Kong... He's gone there to look for new textile designs. But David's like that. He wanted to see for himself what is available, rather than rely on the tastes of importers. When did he leave the country? Four days ago. What is all this about? We're making inquiries about his wife. Caroline. Why? It's hard to believe she's your daughter. Caroline is dead. How did you find out? What are you two playing at? Caroline's been dead for six months now. Give us that envelope, Colt. Here you are, sir. Is this her? Of course not. Caroline didn't look like that. What do you think I am? Give us time and we'll find out, Mrs. Francis. Is this normal to come around asking horrid questions? Look, this is Caroline. Did she look Chinese? Do I look Chinese? Well... So our David Peter Kingham is leading a double life. Looks like it. I suppose this Chinese girl is his wife. It's 
to my darling Lee San on our first anniversary from your loving husband, David. Maybe a bigamous double life if he married Lee San before his first wife died. Pity there's no date engraved on that wedding ring. He's made previous trips to Hong Kong, which he's kept from his mother-in-law, found the lovely Lee San, brought her home, and set her up in a flat. And bought a Rolls Royce. Acted out his fantasy. So he must have other branches to be able to afford it. Like the one those kids found the rolls parked outside. Yeah. The odd we haven't been able to find it. Even odder that we haven't been able to trace those kids. Mm. Oh, hell. That idiot's blocked the road. Why don't those uniforms have him for obstruction? why he killed her? Maybe she was blackmailing him. Maybe she saw him as a likely sponge to be squeezed when she first met him in Hong Kong. Yeah. Or maybe he discovered he couldn't afford to run two cars, two homes and two wives. So he decided to uh, liquidate some of his assets. That is a very sick joke. We're looking for a very sick man. Oh, take me home. I'll have some explaining to do about my leave. No, I haven't. Morning. You're late. Shut up and get out of my chair. Outburst of passion when the alarm clock went off. Oh. Telegram for you. You work your guts out to provide him with a home. Anyway, he didn't kill his first wife. She died during a kidney transplant operation. Where's that Rolls? Still locked up in the North Fell office? I asked you to shift it here into the station yard. Haven't you got enough sense to realize it's asking for trouble leaving a car worth several thousand at that abandoned hole? All the spare parking spaces are needed for the extra mobiles being drafted in to deal with the demos. Does it matter? Not if you don't mind driving out there to recheck the chassis number you were supposed to write down. Mm. Why? Rolls-Royce say they haven't issued such a number. It's too high. I've like double check. Well, go back and triple check. According to this telegram, Rolls-Royce say that at the present rate of production, they don't expect to issue this chassis number for at least another five years. I'll go right away. Be back by two. We're going to the Home Office Immigration Department at Croydon. Oh, no. Then we toddle along to the passport office in Petit France. Our lovely Lee San must be in someone's records. Oh, maybe he brought her into the country rolled up in a bolt of cloth. She's small enough. Was small enough. Stop when you see a brick wall. Why? So I can beat my head against it. <laughs> what am I going to tell Scott? It's the truth? you will skin me. The only reason he hasn't called in the RCS is because I promised an immediate arrest. Oh, I was banking on the immigration office finding something. It's crazy. We've got a murder? Definite. We've got a body? Definite. And we've got a number one suspect we can't lay our hands on. What about flying out to Hong Kong? With the Hong Kong police watching him on a 24-hour surveillance for us, what are you going to say to justify drawing two or three thousand in expenses? Maybe the photographs from the film and the camera will tell us something. The lab promised to have them on your desk by the time we got back. Mrs. Francis was lying. Eh? She said she'd never seen Lee San. Look, Lee San and our Mrs. Francis posing outside the Kingham House. Oh. And look, the lovely Lee San and Mrs. Francis sitting on the bumper of a Rolls Royce parked in the Kingham Drive. Yes. Come on, Colt. Have another look at those photos before we see her. Yeah. What's the matter? Something that's been worrying me. Hmm? Yeah, this peach tree in the photograph. Yeah. That one over there on the front lawn. I mean, the photograph, it looks about five or six years old. Now look at the one over there. See? It looks like a sapling. It is. That thing flapping in the breeze is a nurseryman's label. So the original tree died and they planted a new one. I'll take another look at that tree in the photograph. I don't think it could have died. It's in a sheltered, well-drained spot. Ideal for a peach. And it looks perfectly healthy. Fascinating. Let's go and see Mrs. Francis. Can I look around the garden? Okay. I'll talk to Mrs. Francis while you talk to your peach tree. Something for you to bark up. I tell you, I've never seen her before. I see. 
So she was just someone who happened to be passing when the picture was taken, who just happened to sit beside you on the bumper, and you just happened not to notice. Is that it? Photographs can be faked! No, Mrs. Francis, it is possible to use negatives in such a way as to produce fake photographs, but we have the negatives of these pictures, and they're perfect. David was a keen photographer. He used to spend hours in his dark room. Was a keen photographer? Well, he gave it up. The shop took up all his time, so he sold his equipment. I can show you pictures he's taken indoors, and yet they look like the outdoors, because he took them against a background picture. David was clever like that. I doubt if he was clever enough to fake this picture, Mrs. Francis. But it can't be me. I, I never worn my hair like that, for one thing. It, it doesn't make sense. The only thing that doesn't make sense is why you insist that you've never seen Lee San. Well, we'll call again tomorrow. I, I, I might be out. We'll wait, Mrs. Francis, and then we'll ask you the same questions and show you the same photographs. And then we'll come the following day and the day after that. We'll keep coming, Mrs. Francis, day after day. And when you draw your curtains at night, you'll see our car outside, waiting. You wouldn't do this to me if David was here. If David was here, we probably wouldn't have to. Come on, back to the office. There's a lot of time and money on this garden. Not one rose tree's got black spot, and it's a bad year for it. She denies all knowledge of Lee San. Been plans over something in flower all year she round. She even suggested the photographs had been faked. I reckon that conifer was only planted this year. And she had the nerve to say it must be someone made up to look like her. Show me. It's definitely her. Conifers shoot up given the right conditions, but that one seems to have shrunk. Are you still going on about the garden? That's about fifteen foot high in the photograph. It had only come up to the top of my head when I stood beside it just now. You can have another look tomorrow. I'm going to keep the pressure up until she decides to talk. And it's not only the conifer. Colt, what are you going on about? BD to Kilo 1. Kilo 1 to BD, over. Is Detective Inspector Simmons with you, Kilo 1? Over. Uh, sitting beside me. Oh, no. State your position, please, Kilo 1. Over. We're on the Coombe Cops Park Estate. Over. Thank you, Kilo 1. Message from Mr. Scott. Go to Sylvan House on Coombe Copse Park Estate and see Councillor Butcher regarding windows broken by vandals. Why me? Councillor Butcher is chairman of the Oak Hanger Planning Committee. Mm. Mr. Scott would prefer a senior officer to visit him. Please acknowledge Kilo One. Roger BD. And Kilo One, Mr. Scott stresses that Councillor Butcher be treated with tact. It's wasting ratepayers' money sending a detective inspector. Even one of your dimmest constables would have been able to work out who did it. That blasted troublemaking red, Paul Holden. Who is he, sir? Oh, you people knew them all. He's the rogue who's stirring up the opposition to the town centre redevelopment scheme. Oh, yes, we've seen and heard him in action. Never yeah. had this sort of trouble until he moved into the district. Well, he just in it for himself. Trying to whip up a following for when he stands in the council election. Did you actually see him breaking the windows? Didn't have to. Every stone was wrapped in one of his handbills. Yeah. Jim. Wake up, you dreaming squires of Oakanger. The days when you could dictate to the masses are over. Blasted red. I don't know why people listen to him. The new town centre is just what Oakanger needs. New shops, big ones to attract multiples. A play area where mothers can leave their kids, fountains the lot. And all laid out in a series of squares so it doesn't have the impersonal atmosphere of a new centre. The Oakhanger Chamber of Commerce is 100% in favour of the plan. Yes, uh, but because the stones were wrapped in these hands, it doesn't... See them? Yeah. <clears throat> Two years' work by the architect's department. All this area here will be cleared, and family units moved out to new flats on the edge of the town. That's the first stage, during the next. After that, we'll build the multi-story car park, and the new police station for you, for nothing. Yeah. And this area here will be devoted to the shops. Over 200 of them. A lot of shops, sir. Yeah, well, options have already been taken up on half of them. Deacons, parkland gardening... Living Fabric Centre, Swanton. The Living Fabric Centre? That's right. David Kingham. Lives a few doors away. Put his name down for three units to be made into one shop. Bet you chaps know him. His shop's right opposite the police station. Uh, do you know his wife, sir? Well, I'm used to him. Caroline. Died a while back. Damn shame. Have you ever seen him with uh, this woman before? Are we getting a bit off the subject? Have you ever seen her before? I can't say I have. I don't pry into my neighbour's affairs. What do you know about him? Well, not much. He's shrewd, you know. He took up the options on three shops, even though they won't be ready for another four to five years. 
He said his business will have expanded so much by then that he'll need larger premises. What sort of car does he drive? Well, you people should know that. An MG. What's it got to do with have my windows? Have seen him with a Rolls Royce? Oh, I've heard him talk about one. So he has got one. He's talked of owning one. You know what he said? That his ambition was not to actually own one, but to be able to afford to own one. Hmm? Ah, you've got to hand it to him. <laughs> it would go a long way. He already has. Yes, well, um, thank you very much indeed, Inspector. You've been extremely cooperative. Yes, uh, a very good line. Well, two o'clock in this country. P.M. That's right, in the afternoon. Well, sayonara. Oh, is it? Uh, sorry, I thought it was Chinese. Uh, goodbye, Inspector. Yes, you call when he's about to leave. Bye now. Good grief. Inspector Channing of the Hong Kong Police. He's having Kingham watched day and night by one of his best undercover agents. Only one? A police woman. Day and night. <laughs> Chinese have a more practical approach to surveillance than we have. You smell of Eastern promise. Anything? Oh, there's five Chinese restaurants in the area. I must count of the takeaways. Mm. None of them know anything about Lee San. Mm. Well, we can forget the theory that he met her in Hong Kong. Inspector Channing said this is his first visit. How can he be so sure? Seems they have an efficient system for filing landing cards. Channing's going to maintain this watch and call me when Kingdom's about to leave. His return ticket is for the uh, 25th. He'll be arriving at Heathrow at 15.20 on the 27th. Haven't you had the feeling about this case there's something odd? Something, uh, not right? No. The only thing that's not right is your imagination. Oh, this five-year period that keeps Your up. wild imagination won't close this case. Now, I want Supposing you to... Supposing he doesn't come back. He'll be watched at every refueling stop to make certain he does. And we just sit around until he shows up. You wouldn't want to sit around if you had the sort of fires lit under you that are being lit under me. There's still this camera. The Cosmetic Tri-Star 80. Scraping the bottom of the barrel. Mm, better than being stretched over it. Well, keep looking for those kids. Well, where are you going? To see Scientific and Optical Measuring Limited, sole importers of the Cosmetic Tri-Star camera. And the Cosmetic Microscopes, Mr. Simmons. Yes, sir. We import all Cosmetic Optical Equipment, and very good it is, too. You wouldn't believe that such a so-called backward country could make such a So fine. you couldn't tell me much about an individual camera. You merely pass on the goods to retailers. We inspect and test every instrument before repacking them with an English language handbook and a guarantee card. To keep a record of camera serial numbers? We allocate the serial numbers. Hmm. We have an engraving machine for that very purpose. Now, how can I help you? I'd like to know everything you can tell me about this, please. When it was imported, when you released it, the name of the retailer you sold it to. Hold on, Mr. Simmons. One thing at a time. Uh, may I? Mm. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Mm. Thank you. Uh, is there a film in it? I have to open it to look at the serial number. Go ahead. It's 5136. I doubt it, Mr. Simmons. Oh. 5136. Yes. I think there's been a mistake. One of our... What ingredients... mistake? Just a second, Mr. Simmons. Um, ah, ah, yes. Five, one, three... That's very odd. What is? I don't see how we could make a mistake. All instruments pass through our works in batches of ten on a tray. Each inspector has to sign for them before passing them on to the next department and check that the serial numbers agree with the inspection note. Security, you understand? Yeah. It means that the serial number on each camera is checked at least six times before it leaves us. What's wrong with it? The serial number's far too high, up in the 5000 series. That wall chart is the sales forecast for this camera based on the last six months' figures. A thousand a year. So we won't be issuing the serial number on this camera for another five years. Mr Simmons, is anything the matter? No. Well, I must admit I'm... Baffled? Well, yes. That makes two of us. Except I'm getting used to it. You can get out of my chair. Sorry. <laughs> oh, got a cigarette. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. 
I gather there's been a reaction to the report. Loud and long. I could hear it from here. I'm thinking of jacking it in. Oh, can I have your chair? Mine doesn't swivel. I was turned slowly on the spit while Scott basted me with a tirade of vitriolic scorn. After that, the CC carved me into neat slices with the edge of his tongue. Painful. Well, just lit one. Come on, where are they? Where are what? All the stuff from the Rolls Royce, the photographs, Lee Sands things, they were in this drawer. I haven't touched them. You were sitting at this desk when I came in. Yeah, but I didn't open your drawer. And the camera's gone. You're not supposed to keep exhibits in your desk. Maybe Mr. Scott had them moved. I have a good mind to jack the whole business in here and now. I find myself a cushy number as a security officer. That would please a few. That's why I'm not going to do it. So what do we do now? David Kingham is due back the day after tomorrow. I'm going to have this case completely sewn up, even if we have to work all night. We're going to start from scratch, go over that rose from bumper to bumper, talk to that mad pathologist, even if I have to eat his sandwiches. Put the screws on Mrs. Francis. Well, what do you reckon? Okay. Where do we start? With the rolls. Go and get me the keys to the North Fell office. It's gone. Did you give anyone the authority to move it? No. Sure? Positive. Have you seen it in headquarters, car park? No. If anyone would have wanted to move it, they'd have had to come to me for the keys. Those bastards have taken the case from me and haven't had the guts to say so. Yeah, the blood stain's gone. Look. There's no sign of it. I suppose they thought they'd clean up properly while they were at it. Yeah, but how could they get a stain that size out of concrete? I remember a TV play about someone who was kicked out of his job. He wasn't sacked out, right? He was eased out gradually. First his parking place disappeared. Then he was given a smaller desk. Then his desk was moved into the main office. Each day it was moved nearer the door. Until one day, he didn't bother to show up. He was about five foot ten, dark hair, and forever eating sandwiches. I'm sorry, Inspector Simmons. No one of that description works in the path department of this hospital. But he examined a body. He gave me a report. See, can I see it, please? Well, no, it was verbal. He promised to follow it up with a written report, but never did. What was his name? Hell, I don't know. What was his name, Colt? I don't know. You bloody well should know. I wasn't with you. Oh, all right, then. I'd, I'd like to see the body of the Chinese girl. When was it brought in? The 6th. Of this month? Of course! I think you must be mistaken. We received nothing on the 6th. And it was a Sunday. The lab would have been closed. Now, look here. Now, you look, Doctor. She was brought here on the 6th. The Chinese girl, five foot nothing, long black hair. Detective Sergeant Colt and I brought her here. Uh. We waited in the outer room while the pathologist carried out an on-the-spot examination. So I know she's here and I'm not leaving. Will you please give me those papers? What are you doing? Inspector, please. Look, can't you do stop you him? Do you tell me where she is or do I yank all these out? Now, look, if you think you can just walk so in here... where and exactly... is she? This man. Mr. Simmons, don't you think we... Shut, Shut up, Colt! Well, Doctor, who told you to hide her and where does she know? I've no idea what you're talking about. Satisfied? Well, I'm not leaving until you tell me what you've done with her. Will you please let go? Mr. Simmons, this is... Shut up, Colt! Look, please believe me, Inspector. I know nothing about the body of a Chinese girl. <laughs> Look, you've seen our records. Yeah. I'm sorry, Doctor. It was inexcusable behaviour. We've both been under a bit of strain lately. I'm sorry. How much sleep has he had recently? He's been on the go for two days solid. Uh, look, Inspector. Yeah. Some friendly advice. I'll give you a couple of tablets. Go home and take them with a glass of water and go straight to bed. I knock you out for 24 hours, you'll wake up ready for anything. I could have done with them a few days ago. And I will always look back with affection on my ten years with Okenga CID. Yours sincere Lee. Got an envelope? No. Nope. Although we haven't got a case against him, I've arranged for you to collect Kingham at Heathrow. The details are in the tray. What's the matter? Nothing. Now listen, Colt. <coughs> Simmons. Oh, yes. Put him through. Hello, Inspector. 
Yes, indeed, and uh, you? Yes, an excellent line. Uh, before you start, Inspector, Detective Sergeant Colt is now handling the case. I'll hand you... He's not. I see. When did this happen? How old was she? Yes, terrible. I'm sorry, Inspector, I never thought such a thing could happen. What was her name? Yes. Yeah. Detective Sergeant Colt will be in touch. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Kingham's done in another girl. Kingham has put off his return flight for another week. And the girl, the undercover agent Channing assigned to watch him day and night, has handed in a notice. She and Kingham have got engaged. She was one of Channing's best girls. Her name is Lee Sand. You and I are going to keep a close watch on David Peter Kingham in future.